Hi there, Joel at Earth Tools here, and we're going to walk through the new tractor setup on a BCS 749 walk behind tractor. This is basically how you're going to receive the thing in the box. Uh, the handlebars, however, will be folded down like this so it conforms to the shape of the box. You also find an owner's manual in there and your plastic shrouds that go on the top to make it look all sexy. If you're getting a, any kind of a power safe model, which would be the 749, uh, 750, or 739, we're also going to include a power safe oil filter in there. This is the uh, oil filter for the transmission and clutch system of the tractor. It's located right down here. You can see right down here below the engine. A lot of people think this is an engine oil filter because it looks like an automotive oil filter on a car. But this is the transmission and clutch oil filter for this engine, or for this, uh, for this unit. The engine has no oil filter on these things. So this, what we send along is a replacement oil filter because BCS wants this oil filter and the transmission oil changed after 30 hours, which is why they've got 30H written on this first filter, 30 hours of use for the first initial break-in procedure. After that, every 100 hours it needs to be changed, both the oil and filter again. So, uh, filter and oil specs can be found in your owner's manual and on our website. So, that's a no-charge filter, courtesy of our tools for the first break-in. At any rate, so the tractor's going to come in a box. The box is on a pallet. The easiest way to get it out is to either have four strong friends come. No, really, that's not the best way because it means hurt backs. You just slit the corners of the box with a razor knife or your pocket knife or whatever, fold the box down, and roll the tractor out. The tractor is fully serviced and oiled here at Earth Tools. I test run every machine before it leaves here. If you find this little inspected sticker on your tractor, I don't sign my name because I'm the only one who inspects them, but if you've got an inspected sticker on it, I've run your tractor uh, to make sure all the adjustments are correct. So this is how it's going to roll out. As you saw me earlier lower these handles, I'm now going to raise them so they're going to come in this lower down position. You simply push down this lever here, raise them up to the appropriate height, and they lock back into position into one of these little notches here. So you can select any one of these positions for your handle height. Obviously with no implement on it right now, the tractor is not sitting at its natural height because normally an implement would be counterbalancing the other end of the tractor. So, we'll take a minute to go over controls. This can all be found in your owner's manual. If you want to bring the camera around this side, we'll kind of do a once over. <clears throat> We've got the engine on off control here. This is on a manual start tractor that you just pull start, so there's no key switch. If there were a key switch, we'd also have a key switch down here uh, or possibly back here by the battery if, uh, if it was a diesel. But anyway, on a manual start unit, this is the on off switch. There is no position, even though this, this decal is kind of misleading, this is on, this is off. These, there is no in-between position. Some people think they, tr they try to hit an intermediate position there because the decal is kind of goofy. This is on, this is off, no problem. So uh, this is your safety control, the red handle on top, and the bottom lever is your clutch control. These are kind of interlocked together on the power safe units because of the way the hydraulic clutch works. We'll get into that later. The outboard levers uh, sticking out to each side are your steering brakes, independent right and left steering brakes. They change their orientation in relation to the tractor depending on which way you've got the handlebars oriented. Typically, when the handlebars are in this position right here, meaning the tractor is in its front PTO mode, left is the left wheel and right is the right wheel. When you turn the handlebars around, they're going to be backwards. But that's okay because you don't use them much in that mode. This one on the bottom here is your handlebar orientation control. When you squeeze it, it releases the handlebars so they can be moved left and right. They lock into position 15 degrees off center. And also, this is used to turn the handlebars fully around, which we will do in a minute. Up here, we'll go around these part of the controls. This is the forward and reverse control. This red lever right here. Uh, forward and reverse is relative to tractor handlebar orientation. So again, this changes when you turn the handlebars around. But this is your directional control. This is the differential lock. This is the device that locks both axles together for maximum traction. Um, 
pulls pulls uh, with more traction that way, but it's very hard to maneuver because when the differential is locked, you can't turn the wheels independently of one another. Uh, parking brake. This is the pulling this back actually locks both brakes of the tractor at once for parking on a hill or in the back of a truck or something like this. On down to these levers here, we have the wheel speed selector. There's a one, two, and three down at the bottom to show you which gear you're in. Uh, and there's a neutral between every gear. This is the power takeoff lever that engages whatever implement you're using. And again, this is the handlebar tilt. So that kind of control covers the controls. Now let's walk around to this side of the machine. We've got an oil fill here for the engine, oil drain for the engine, oil drain for the transmission and clutch system. Clutch and transmission oil is all the same. It all runs together. And this is the drain for this, uh, for this part, portion of the thing. This is not the engine oil drain. Uh, we've had some confusion about that. There are engine fill and drain ports on both sides of the engine. That is, if you look on the other side of the engine, you'll find a mirroring port. Well, just, they look just like this. Uh, sometimes these caps are black. Sometimes they are gray. There's no difference. Uh, they Both ports on both sides of the engine go into the same place. This is a universal engine, so it's simply supplied with ports on both sides because the engine manufacturer doesn't know where this engine is going to be situated, so they put them on both sides for convenience. On this application, it's easier to use the ones on this side because they're just open and exposed. You don't have to deal with the muffler in the way. Now, checking the oil means that the machine has to be level in order to get an accurate reading. Now, we've already checked the oil levels, so you don't have to worry about it. But if I were to check, if I were to want to check this level now, here, let me uh, grab a piece of wood here. That's not quite going to do it. This is when you wish you had your props in place before you shot the video. That's pretty much level. So when I take this cap off, we want that oil to be running out the hole pretty much, and that's exactly what it's doing. We're getting a little oil drizzling out the hole with the engine level. That means the engine is filled to capacity. Notice something else here. There is no dipstick on the inside of that cap. Some of the caps come with a dipstick. We cut it off here at Earth Tools. We actually snip the dipstick off. It's a very short dipstick, and we found that it just gets people in trouble. The maximum fill... Uh, that these engines, well, let me rephrase that. The maximum allowable fill on a Honda engine or a Subaru engine or a Kohler engine that's a gas engine is filled to overflowing with this low oil fill port. If you had a high oil fill port with a long dipstick on it, you of course don't want to fill it to overflowing. You, you pay attention to the dipstick then. But an engine that's got a low oil fill port down here in the bottom uh, quarter of the engine the height it's designed to be filled overflowing. So you can't screw up and put too much oil in it, but you can, if you've got a little short dipstick on there, screw up and put too little oil in it because we've had customers over the years who pull that out and they see a little oil on the end of the dipstick and they say, oh, it's still in the safe zone. I just, I don't feel like going and getting the oil can, so I'm gonna put it back in and go run it. Well, then they go up and they mow on some extreme angle and the engine locks up because that little bit of oil in the safe zone on the bottom of the dipstick is enough to run the engine if it's level, not if it's tilted to maximum angle. So if you never want to have a low oil failure on your engine, fill it up till it runs out the hole. We take the dipsticks off, so we just take the questions away for our customers. You can't overfill it. If you do, it runs back out. So again, uh, we had the oil fill or the oil drain port for the transmission oil here. That's what you're gonna drain after 30 hours to change the oil and filter in your power safe transmission. When you, when you open that port, you should actually have this stuff out from here and have the engine lean down this way. That gets all your transmission oil out. And I usually put a block of wood under that opposite wheel to kind of lift that side of the machine up so it gets all the old oil out. Then level the machine back out, you know, put blocks under the, or under the engine or put an implement on it to level the machine out. The fill port for the transmission is right here. It's a little tough to get to. This just pulls out, it's not threaded in, it just pops out with an O-ring. And right now, of course, there's plenty of oil in it because we've checked it. 
uh, there's a there's a two lines on the dipstick there that de designate your upper and lower level. You about have to have one of those curvy funnels to get in under this stupid little key box that, or uh, toolbox they've got here. But that takes universal tractor hydraulic fluid. Like I say, the specs are in the owner's manual. It takes about two quarts. So that's going to be changed after 30 hours in the transmission and then every 100 hours thereafter. The engine oil should be changed after about eight hours initially for the break-in and then every 40 to 50 hours thereafter. We also have recommendations for uh, you know synthetic oils and things like that on our website if you want to check that out. We're now going to turn the tractor handlebars around. A lot of the implements you're going to run are rear PTO, all your soil working tools. So I'm going to pop these shift levers out of their little plastic holders here. Squeeze this release lever here for the orientation and I'm gonna bring them around. If I try to go the wrong way, it's gonna stop. There's a big stop welded on over here that won't let you turn one way. That's a good idea because otherwise you'd wrap your cables up in a knot. Bring it all the way around. So now that we've got the handlebars oriented in this mode, we're ready to hook up our soil working implements. I'm gonna take a minute to talk about the operation of the power safe uh, control lever here. You will find on your new machine this tag, which is a handwritten tag written by me, and I don't need to read it to you because you can probably read it for yourself, but the, the point is that this zip tie that's holding this lever down is just here for, for shipping. Cut it or slip it off of there. It does not need to be there for operation. It would be hazardous to tie down your safety lever. But if we don't tie that down for shipping, this handle will invariably get bent uh, because of the way it sticks off the top of the handlebars. At any rate, we're gonna get rid of this. I'm just gonna slide it off here in this case. Critical that in using the power safe clutch control, the hydraulic clutch control, you squeeze the bottom first all the way up and then you depress the top. Everything works real easy when you do that. And then once the top is depressed, your bottom becomes your, your clutch lever, just like a hand clutch on a motorcycle or ATV or anything like that. So you squeeze the clutch, which interrupts power between the engine and transmission. You shift your gear, you know, or put the PTO in gear, whatever you need. And then when you release this, power is engaged to the wheels and implement uh, if you've got them both in gear. So anytime you want to stop the tractor, you squeeze that or you let the whole thing go. When you let this lever up, it does the same thing as squeezing the black lever, which is it interrupts power. It opens the, the clutch. So... Uh, but this has to, you know, when you're going, when you're uh, approaching the tractor and ready to work, you've got to squeeze the bottom one first and then the top. If you try to push the top first, it's not going to go down. And if you force this, you will damage the cable or the linkage down there. And this is confusing because anybody who's used a BCS machine in the past without a hydraulic clutch, that is with just the standard clutch, they push this down first and then squeeze the bottom. So it's completely backwards on this machine from the old BCS machines. The power safe machines with the hydraulic clutches are used backwards in this interface. You know, to repeat, lower first, then the top. Totally backwards from the standard clutch. Once this is down, this can be squeezed all day. This is, this is you know, working, mowing, tilling, whatever. Stopped, I can shift my gears, let out the clutch again, and resume motion. Anytime you let go of that, it does the same thing as squeezing the bottom. It interrupts motion completely. And then when you, you know, so if you... You know, if you uh, hit a rock or the machine starts going in the ditch or whatever, or your kid needs you and you need to run, you just let go and then you run uh, to what you need to do or get away from the bee nest that you just tilled up. Uh, the engine stays running, but all drive disengages because the clutch opened. It's just like mashing your foot on a clutch in a truck. And when you come back to it, you do this. Uh, all the cables can be adjusted at the top end. You've got these motorcycle style brake adjusters and or cable adjusters right? uh, that you can tension or detension all the cables as needed because the cables will stretch over time. Backing the, basically this is the jam nut, you loosen that and then you back this bolt out to increase cable tension and make it tighter or screw the bolt in to reduce cable tension and make it looser. Then when you're done adjusting, just lock the jam nut back down. That's a 13 millimeter. Um, I think we've covered most of it. Uh, let's see, is there anything else I wanted to cover? We have videos on the quick coupling use and maintenance. I'm not going to cover any of that now because you can watch our other videos on that. 
If you have air-filled tires, we have already checked the tire pressure, uh, but at least every six months, if not more, you should put a tire gauge on them and make sure you've got 20 to 25 PSI in them. Uh, if you have the foam-filled tire options from us, you don't have to worry about that because the foam fill is, there's no air, they never go flat. So we've got these shrouds that came with it, and you think this would be simple enough, but it's not. So the shroud just pops onto the top of the handlebars. There's these little white pokey things here, and they slide through these little rubber grommets. Number one, the rubber grommets have to be lubricated somewhat. The factory puts some oil on here. Sometimes it's not enough, and I add a little grease. So these should be kind of greasy looking when you go to put these on. Over the years that you have your tractor, if you pull the shroud off and then you go to put it back on, I almost guarantee that this, these, this grease is gonna be dried up. And if you just force this thing through without any lubricant, it's gonna pop these rubber grommets right through. The friction is so great that instead of the white thing going in to the rubber, it just pushes the rubber out the bottom, the rubber falls in the dirt, you don't know where it is, you call us up and order more, they're two or three dollars a piece. If you lube them, even with a little spit, it, it'll get through there and it won't pop them out. Now, here's the trick. These cables are just kind of wagging around here. And it looks like we could put those cables between those two, uh, uh, those little white pokey things. That would be a real problem because when we turn the handlebars around, those cables would be trapped in there and it would actually kink all those cables and cause you to have major cable problems. So you want to pull these off to the side. With a 749, they kind of lay, lay that way anyway. On the 853 tractors, they kind of want to go up over the middle, so it's a little more of a problem. But anyway, just put them like that. Just put them off to the side, and then force your way down to the grommets. Work it through the grommets slow. There we go, and then pop the top grommet in. There you go. And those the, the shroud does not need to be removed when you rotate the handles around. You can go ahead and rotate it with the cables in place and all is good on the non-electric start units they'll also have this cover here which pops on right down here over this little toolbox it's kind of a useless thing I don't know whoever keeps tools in this thing but it's there I can't find the holes there we go and with all these shrouds on of course it gets at least a half a mile uh, to the gallon better and yeah okay thank you